Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll have an update from Washington on the slow moving farm bill. Plus, insights on building beef demand and expert advice on the value of making big square bales. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. In our news this week, losses are still being tallied after the devastating blizzard that hit South Dakota unexpectedly early this fall. The images are unsettling for anyone who cares for cattle, and no doubt tens of thousands of animals were lost in that brutal storm that caught so many ranch families off guard. However, relief efforts are underway. The South Dakota Cattlemen's Association, South Dakota Stock Growers Association, and South Dakota Sheep Growers Association have established a relief fund to provide assistance to those hit hard by the storm. If you'd like more information on how you can help, visit the website giveblackhills.org and search Rancher Relief Fund. In Washington, D.C., progress on a new farm bill has slowed to a glacial pace. In light of the government shutdown and the continuing battles on Capitol Hill over the budget and the proper role of the federal government. We ask NCBA's Colin Woodall for an update on the outlook for a new farm bill. The Farm Bill has been the top priority for NCBA for several years now. We've been working on the 2013 Farm Bill for going on now four years. We are getting closer. The Senate has named the conference committee members. Uh, these are the senators who will be in the room as the House and the Senate work out the differences between their two versions of the Farm Bill in order to get a final package. Our push right now is working with the House leadership to make sure that they name their House conferees in order to complete this process. Unfortunately, the government shutdown has really delayed that process. Join NCBA in the fight for issues that matter to cattlemen by becoming an NCBA member. Find out more by calling 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beefusa.org. No matter what a beef producer does on their farm or ranch, without a consumer buying beef in a restaurant or grocery store, the opportunity for profit would be limited. Understanding what opportunities there are to influence consumer demand for beef is a key focus of a recent Beef Checkoff funded study, as we'll learn from Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Sharon Alseth. What factors determine whether a consumer will choose to buy beef? Answering that question was the focus of a beef demand determinant study funded by the Beef Checkoff and conducted by economists at Purdue and Kansas State Universities. The study provides insight into how consumers feel about beef. We're trying to look at what beef demand determinants are five to ten years out. So we're looking at uh, what our consumers uh, are wanting going forward. So we'll take that and we'll use that in uh, advertising campaigns, we'll use it in promotional products and so forth. The study showed consumer beef demand is influenced by product quality and price, but at the top of the list of demand influencers is beef safety. To me, the primary key message is if we don't have a safe product and we don't have beef safety, none of the other drivers matter. So safety is uh, priority number one, and uh, after that, taste, tenderness, flavor come in very high. Even with lower supplies and higher prices for beef, consumer demand has been holding strong, and the producers who volunteer their time to help lead the beef checkoff believe there's opportunity to continue growing. Well, I believe there's always opportunity to increase beef demand, and that's why we have a checkoff to uh, keep promoting our product, ensuring that it has uh, the good nutritional values that it does. But yes, we do have an influence on in, uh, improving demand continuously. The beef demand study will serve as a roadmap to help guide future beef checkoff research and promotion programs. I'm Sharon Alseth reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Joining us now to talk more about checkoff funded research and how it ties to beef demand is Dr. Mandy Carr Johnson, the executive director of the newly renamed Science and Product Solutions team at NCBA. Mandy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. You have a really diverse team that works on a number of projects. Why don't you give us a little overview of what all you work on? Be glad to. We do have a diverse group. It brings together our research programs, which are safety, human nutrition, product quality, and sustainability. 
the other part of our department brings together our culinary work and our new products and innovations team. So as a diverse group together, bringing a lot of market, uh, beef market intelligence to the platform. And I understand you have renamed uh, your mm -hmm. group. Uh, tell us a little bit about the logic behind that renaming. So the process we worked through was really to find names that would better explain what all we bring to the table. So we do still focus heavily on research, but the science part of that really better describes that it's more than just research projects. It's about taking that knowledge and putting it into peer-reviewed documents and to helpful literature for decision makers. So that is one of our pieces. The other is the product solutions really is a good name to encompass not only what we know from a culinary side or a recipe development and flavor profile, but also ways to make beef convenient for today's busy consumer. Yeah, and while you've gotten rid of the word research in your title, right. as you indicate, you still do focus quite a bit on research, Research right? is still critically important to the department, uh, to NCBA, and to the beef checkoff. So we do still have the safety, the product quality or product enhancement, our sustainability and our human nutrition research programs, and we still have those at a level of funding that's similar to years past, even in a time when the checkoff collections is lower than it has been before. So real strong commitment, not only from NCBA, but from the producers who make those funding decisions. That's great news to me, because I think research is so critically important to, to keeping beef competitive in the marketplace. Tell, tell folks a little bit about some of the research projects your team is working on even as we speak. Sure. One of the key things in our safety area really is a focus to continue on E. coli work because that is one that's critically important, but really shifting our focus to look at the new challenges we have maybe with salmonella or antibiotic resistant bacteria. So a strengthened focus in that area. From product quality standpoint, we know that from the beef demand determinant study that taste and quality are some of the top drivers in people wanting to choose beef. So our continued work there to make sure every eating experience is tender juicy and flavorful. The other piece in our human nutrition, you know, one of the critical things we have to do is help consumers know that beef can play a role in a heart healthy diet. Right. Maybe they didn't think that before. So continuing to develop the research that proves that so they can make good decisions. And then lastly, our sustainability program is one that's relatively new mm -hmm. and we have a uh, LCA project, our life cycle assessment project that was just certified and it's the most encompassing of any product mm -hmm. there is. So continuing to get that message out about that and enhancing that information so producers can use that tool to continue to produce beef in a very sustainable way. You, know, you mentioned beef demand a moment ago and I'm interested, uh, tell folks specifically what some of your team does to, to both protect and to build beef demand. I think that's one of the critical things to know is these programs play both sides. It's important to protect the demand that we have now that consumers that like to eat beef mm -hmm are reassured that that's a good choice, whether that's from a sustainability standpoint or a human health uh, perspective. But also working towards, so those that may have questions about is beef a good decision? Is it safe for my family? Is it going to be a good eating experience when I pay the price I have to pay? Right. So working on both sides to provide those that may have questions about choosing beef that evidence they need to make that purchase, whether at retail or at food service. That's outstanding. Thank you so much for all your team is doing to, uh, to help us in the beef industry. Thank you. To learn more about the checkoff funded work of the science and product solutions team, visit beefresearch.org or you can visit our website at cattleman cattleman.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're in an area where the ranching heritage is very deep and all of us are good stewards of the land and we learn from each other. We'll visit with two award-winning ranch families in the Sand Hills of Nebraska. Plus, we'll head to Iowa for expert advice on making big square bales and how that can help improve forage efficiency for cattlemen. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD TV. It's time to gear up for fall with big savings on John Deere hay equipment. Get 0% financing on mower conditioners, balers, and select hay tools. And for a limited time, get up to $3,600 off a new 8 or 9 series round baler plus an extra $750 in-season bonus. So don't wait. Come in today before these gear up for fall savings come to an end.
Welcome back. As feed costs have soared in recent years, cattlemen and women have looked at a number of alternatives to become more efficient in baling and storing their hay and forage crops. One trend is towards larger, easier to handle big square bales. For more on that, we turn to Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter John Robinson in Iowa. Thanks, Kevin. I'm John Robinson, Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter here in central Iowa with Mark Lowry from New Holland Agriculture. Mark, tell us a little bit about why a cattleman would add a baler to their operation. Sure, John. Well, this year we've seen a lot of interest from cattlemen in large square balers for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is uh, a lot of cattlemen are buying large square bales for the first time as hay inventories have been a little lower. They've maybe switched the package of hay that they're doing. And so as they start thinking about their operation, they look at large square bales for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first may be efficiency in the operation. They're able to uh, gain more throughput per hour, more tons per hour with a large square baler. They're able to perhaps handle less bales. Um, and uh, the other reason is just basically thinking about their whole operation in general. As cattlemen may be getting a larger haying operation as we're looking at hay and forage as a more important part of the ration, uh, this allows them to cover that hay acreage in a, in a faster amount of time and, and get that crop off the ground before, before the rain's coming or whatever they may be challenged with. What are some of the features that make these balers more efficient and operators more efficient as they're working them? Well, as I had mentioned, one of the big things is, is capacity and speed in the field. Uh, operators are able to achieve higher ground speeds while operating a large square baler. Uh, so that's the first thing, and that just equals more tons per hour. Uh, with our unit in particular, uh, they're able to gain more efficiency by requiring a little less horsepower uh, through the gearbox that we use in our baler. So they're able to put maybe a little smaller tractor on there and still get uh, the same adva efficiency advantages out of their large square baler. And they're able to gain some other advantages in terms of, of managing their crop in a more precise way with large square bales. Uh, whether that be with uh, moisture, baling at higher moistures, uh, saving some of the data from those bales. And if there are cattlemen that are selling their bales, they have some options to uh, individually tag those bales and, and keep data on them so when they sell them they know where that bale came from, what the moisture was, etc. What are some of the things, the features that make this uh, easy to operate? So there are quite a few things that make this uh, ease of operation really key for this large square baler. Uh, the first is right in the tractor. Uh, these balers come with a, uh, uh, can come with a touch screen uh, color monitor, uh, or they do have the option to, uh, uh, to be ISO bus compatible and plug into the virtual terminal of the tractor if your tractor already has a monitor and is capable of that. Uh, but that's going to give you all the functions of the baler right at your fingertips. So that's going to give you all of your operation feedback. If you do happen to have uh, maybe a shear bolt failure, it's going to alert you to that. Uh, so that's going to let you know what's happening in the bale, what, uh, what's happening to the baler, uh, what the, what the density is looking like, and, and what kind of load you're putting on the plunger, and how, really how hard you're working the baler, uh, so you know uh, what the final result's going to be. And what solutions are offered for baling crops at higher moisture? So as we've been challenged this year by some wet weather in many parts of the country, one of the things that we've really noticed is interest in, in baling higher moisture haze. Uh, New Holland offers a crop saver kit, uh, which will actually treat the hay as it's coming into the baler with a buffered propionic acid. Uh, that propionic acid is, is safe for animals and will preserve uh, the color of the hay, preserve the palatability, but most importantly, allow you to bale at up to 30% moisture uh, while still getting that hay in the baler is, as I said, as we're challenged a little bit uh, with different crop conditions. So that crop saver kit is really a valuable tool to help, uh, to help preserve hay over the long term as well. Uh, like I said, preserving that color and quality uh, is important for those cattlemen that may, be, that may be selling their hay. So it's just kind of that extra uh, peace of mind uh, that, their, that their stored hay is going to keep a lot better over time. How can bale identification be uh, beneficial for both hay feeders and uh, hay producers? Sure, so as, as hay and forage becomes an, an ever more increasingly important part of the ration, what bale identification does for us, or as cattlemen, even, or even as they're purchasing bales or making them for themselves, uh, that crop ID tagger uh, mounts to the back of the baler and will apply an individual RFID tag to each bale that will include some important data about that bale so you know when it was baled, what the bale weight of that uh uh, particular bale was, what the moisture of that bale was, uh, what crop type is included in that uh, bale, what field it came from, so that you have all that data as you're including it in the ration to assure that you're getting quality bales uh, to make quality feed. 
Uh, so that's something that's uh, again integrates with uh, with kind of a precision bailing system in order to give uh, customers and cattlemen that, that total package as they're looking at managing their feed inputs. Thanks Mark. We'll be back with more Cattlemen to Cattlemen from Central Iowa right after this. New Holland equipment is built smart for the way you farm. And the New Holland Big Baler is smart for the way you make big square bales. The new Big Baler series large square balers from New Holland use the latest technologies to deliver dense, uniform bales in every crop at high speed. Wide maxi sweep pickups grab hay or straw in the toughest windrows, feeding it into the bale chamber where the New Holland density management system makes each bale to your exact specifications. Operators can also choose from a variety of crop cutters systems to cut crop just the way you need it to maximize feed utilization and mixing times. And if you're looking for precision, ask your New Holland dealer about options to monitor and control weight, moisture, and RFID bale identification. Any way you look at it, the New Holland Big Baler is smarter and faster to get the job done right the first time. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment in addition to all of the benefits available to cattle producers. Welcome back to Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm here now with Scott Wangsgaard, Biomass Marketing Specialist for New Holland Agriculture. Scott, tell me a little bit about the checklist operators should follow before taking their baler to the field. Well, there's several things that an operator should do before he goes to the field with a baler. One thing that's really important is cleanliness. Make sure that gets cleaned off. Uh, a good way to do that is with a leaf blower, blow that off. That does two things for you. One, it helps you clean it off, gets that material out so it doesn't cause any problems. But the other thing it does, it gives you a chance to inspect the machine for anything that could be broken or a bolt coming loose or anything like that. So you can do that as you go through. Um, several other things you check is chain tightness. Make sure your chains stay tight throughout the season, especially as you put new chains on or a uh, new baler, you're gonna, that chain's gonna stretch a little bit. So you wanna check that. Wanna make sure that the oil and the grease reservoirs are full. And then when we actually, when you do a 10 hour service on this baler, there's only four greasers that you have to hit on a daily basis on this one because of the automatic greaser system. So you can go through those four. And uh, then the other thing that I think is very important whenever you do a service is to reset that in the monitor and the monitor will help keep track of what service was done and when it was done so we don't lose track in all our busy schedules that we have in the in the fall and we don't lose track of what service we've done and what we haven't. What settings are important for uh, an operator to pay close attention to to make sure his baler is performing well in hay crops? Okay, one of the best things or one of the most important things I guess is the pickup and the pickup height. We want to be able to adjust that and we've got a very easy way to adjust the pickup height and that way we're not running into rocks and it really will help with the durability of the pickup. Uh, so that's very important. Another thing is the wind guard. Setting this wind guard at the right position so you've got um, you know, enough, if you're doing corn stalks, you've got enough room for it or if you're doing other hay crops, you can pull that in a little bit tighter. Um, and then we want that laid down on the windrow so it's not plowing the windrow, but it's keeping the pressure on the pickup teeth that it needs. What are some of the other often missed adjustments that baler operators are making? One thing that's very key is getting that hooked up to the tractor correctly and which tractor you're hooking it up to. The PTO length is very important and when making sure that you've got the front half and the back half of the PTO cut to the right length so you don't bottom out that PTO on a corner and it doesn't come apart if you go over a hill. So setting the proper hitch height and then also setting the mid-mount bearing correctly and then and also the like I said the PTO um, cut length is also very important. Why is tire selection on a baler important? Well we have several different tire options and the more tire the different tires depends on the type of soil that you have and what you're worried about what what kind of crop you're baling. Um, we offer the high flotation tires which are a radial tire that that really help to um, decrease the amount of compaction. Uh, we also have a single, a single axle which would be for the economy uh, just for the, the price and then we also have a, a small tandem for a lot of hay producers and then also the high flotation tires if you've got a compaction problem in your field already. 
For hay producers who are interested in bale weights, uh, can you measure bale weights with a square baler and how does that work? Yes, we can. We can measure the bale weight of each individual bale as it falls off the back of the bale chute. As that bale gets to that tipping point where it's not on the front half of the bale chute and not on the ground, we snap a weight. We can take a picture of that. And new, we've done this New Holland Smart. We, it's not just uh, uh, it, it, it's not just some load cells. We actually can tell whether it's a bounce in the field or the uh, or the bale falling off the back. We can we have to know what angle you're at as well because also if you're going uphill or downhill that could also change your bell weight. So there's several different sensors on there. It's a very smart system to keep that bell weight accurate. Can this baler be integrated with a GPS system and uh, how does that work and how does that help producers in the field? Yes, we can put GPS location on it. If we've got an ISO compliant tractor, we can even use the, the GPS that's on the tractor itself. But we can bring that data in and we can see where the drop points are in the field, which can somewhat lead to where, um, where my yield is, where my yield's heaviest, where it's lightest. And we can get a general idea of, of what our field is doing and what it's producing. Thanks, Scott, for that great information. Reporting from Central Iowa, I'm John Robinson for Cattleman to Cattleman. For more information about New Holland Agriculture's full lineup of equipment, visit agriculture.newholland.com or visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Don't go away. We'll be back with more right after this. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a 2x4 rectangle tube frame. There's a 1 inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Bend Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Bend Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBendTrailers.com. Big Bend Trailers, built cattlemen tough. No storm is too powerful for New Purina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Welcome back. This week, we wrap up our visit with the 2013 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award by heading to Region 7. In the Sand Hills of Nebraska, two ranching families have created a unique partnership to work together in caring for their land and leaving a legacy for the next generation. Let's head to Nebraska for a closer look. In the Sand Hills of Nebraska, the Schweitzer and Morgan ranches stretch across more than 21,000 acres. The families have been neighbors for generations, and though the ranches are completely separate businesses, the two families work together in the Gracie Creek Landowners Association. We started the Gracie Creek Landowners Association after my dad and I had traveled to the African country of Namibia. And what we saw over there was how private landowners really got together and collaborated on these common concerns or common goals. And the impact that they had on the broad landscape was just so undeniable. The Gracie Creek Landowners Association is uh, very effective in using our resources and, make, and getting our resources. Really that's what it works as, is uh, an agent so that we have an ability to apply for and get different grants so that we can get resources to work with. 
we can make a bigger difference. You know, I, I can do everything uh, right, and the mortgage can do everything right. But when you put it all together, then we've made a big difference because the land joins and it's a, it's a bigger area, you know. We're in an area where the ranching heritage is very deep, and all of us are good stewards of the land, and we learn from each other. Both families have worked to keep their ranches economically sustainable in different ways. The Morgans raise Hereford seed stock and show animals and finish their own Wagyu cattle to market Morgan Ranch beef worldwide. It's really gate to plate, and that's something we think is really cool. We can trace the animals all the way from really, we put them into their breeding pastures, and then we own that animal all the way until it's a retailed piece of meat. The Schweitzers have brought another generation back home by diversifying with more custom grazing and creating a hunting and tourism operation called Calamus Outfitters. And one of the most rewarding parts of our tourism operation is taking people out onto the landscape and seeing for themselves where their food comes from. And there's no denying after they sense it with all five senses, cattle and stewardship can go hand in hand. Together, the Schweitzers and Morgans are tackling a number of projects to improve their resources. Through the Gracie Creek Landowners Association, they created an integrated stewardship plan and obtained a grant to buy a tree cutter to remove invasive red cedar trees. The cedar trees were a huge problem. They were overtaking the north face of the hills and making them so that they were virtually no good to cattle. We've been able to accomplish more in the few short years that we've had the Landlords Association, more than we ever thought we could. We've probably fast forwarded our timeline on a lot of our landscape goals by at least 10 or 15 years. The two ranches have worked to disperse cattle grazing across a wider area by adding solar powered water systems and cross fencing. For improved grass production, both families make use of prescribed burns and deferred grazing systems. So we do rotational grazing. and We rotate these cows from pasture to pasture and keep them grazing. I really like it because it's helping heal different spots. The families are also trying to reintroduce an endangered plant that only occurs in sandhill blowouts. The blowout pinstamen, to me, there's just, it's such a great example of the type of creature that inhabits the sand hills, that they choose to live in this environment that hardly anything else <laughs> would choose to live in. They're tough and yet they're beautiful and their purpose is to make the land better for the next thing. In every direction you can see results. The banks of Gracie Creek are grassed over and stabilized and all of their stewardship efforts have the benefit of providing critical habitat for wildlife and birds. Real good grassland management through livestock grazing also leads to very good uh, grassland bird habitats. I think what impresses me about um, the Gracie Creek Landowners Association is the idea that they, they really take ranching and they combine it with their environmental goals and they really, they do it together. You know, they think about the birds and they think about the wildlife and that in turn helps their ranching goals. Every day, the families of the Gracie Creek Landowners Association work to care for the grasslands of the Sand Hills with an eye toward a sustainable future. My biggest dream is to see next generations come back and the generations after that and maintain this land as it has always been. We've always told the kids and, and the grandkids are also being raised that you have to take care of the land. If you want to be in business and you want to be in business every year, then you have to take care of the land. When you can saddle up and take the whole family out for a ride like we did this morning when there's three generations of us a, a horseback, you know you're teaching that young generation a stewardship from day one. Seeing the kids being brought up on the ranch is really satisfying. Being able to instill in them an appreciation of where they're at, the freedoms they enjoy, the beauty that they're surrounded in, and the fact that we're so blessed to live here and take care of it.
Across the country, farmers and ranchers are working hard to protect the environment and leave the land in better condition for future generations. Help NCBA members improve their stewardship and sustainability by becoming a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or email us at c 2 c at beef.org. We'll be back with more right after this. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family a home-cooked meal. That's important to me. That's important to me. And planting the garden and watching it grow. Welcome back. Respiratory disease in cattle is one of the most significant health-related issues our industry faces. In fact, it costs producers an average of $15 per calf per year. Cattleman and Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter had a chance to visit the Linskoff Thiel Ranch in South Dakota to learn more about their progressive operation, their heritage, and how they protect their cattle from respiratory illness. Uh, Les and I have been in the uh, seed stock business for 30 years. Started out with Charley cattle and uh, have added Angus about 10, 12, 15 years ago. So we sell both breeds and uh, pretty much a local regional market. Uh, we sell on the two, the Cheyenne and the Standing Rock Indian Reservation are two of our main areas along with probably 50, 80 miles either side of that. And we also sell a few herd bulls. I'm very fortunate. My wife, Nancy, will be married 25 years next year, and uh, she's a big part of the operation. She does nearly all the office work, keeps me organized, keeps all the records going in and out of the associations, and handles semen accounts and payouts, and uh, she's just a big part of the business. It truly wouldn't be the operation it is without her in it. Uh, from a family standpoint, I've had the opportunity to watch Les and Marsha, our partners, raise four sons in this ranch and uh, they're all involved in his ranch in one form or another and now they've got kids coming up and so to see multi-generation families uh, thrive in agriculture is, is really kind of nice. On the Linskoff Thiel Ranch in Isabel, South Dakota, two families have worked hard to develop a strong customer base to market their Charlet, Black Angus and commercial herds. Oh, we're pretty fortunate, I think, in this region. Our, our cattle economy is good, and uh, uh, so that's kind of the core of our business and our customers' business. Um, we're lucky in that most of our customers uh, derive their living from a cow-calf and some somewhat small grain. So genetics and bulls are a big, big part of their life, and so we try to be a big part of that. Another important goal on the operation, calf health. Brent says focusing on the long-term health of their herds has helped grow and maintain their reputation and customer base. And managing for respiratory health is one of the most important parts of their health program. Our cow-calf operation, uh, at branding time we give all of our calves um, Vista once and uh, Vision 7. And uh, then we booster that in September or uh, 1st of September around Labor Day usually. And then we booster it uh, the day we weaned, which is usually about the 10th of October. So by the time they're weaned, uh, hopefully we've done a good job and gotten them through about three rounds of vaccination. It's a program that's been developed in partnership with his local veterinarian. Dr. Tammy Winger Merriman says the old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, rings true, especially when it comes to managing respiratory diseases. My advice to producers when dealing with respiratory disease is prevention is always 
worth it. Uh, prevention is always better than treatment. Uh, when you hit the stage of needing treatment, lung damage is done, uh, morbidity is higher, mortality is higher. So dollars are well spent in prevention. Stay out with your cattle. Get, get be out there. Be. I think. I think. In my experience, you have to strike first, and you have to uh, vaccinate. Not only from a preventative standpoint, but when you see something sick, to me, if you wait a couple days or get busy haying or doing something else, you're behind the game, and it's a lot harder to prevent scar or tissue damage and those kinds of things as compared to being out there and knowing what's going on and staying on top of it. We'll have more on the importance of preventing bovine respiratory disease when we come back. Stay with us. Respiratory disease is a significant animal health issue in the beef industry. It costs producers nearly a billion dollars in lost profits each year, and it's the most prevalent disease in calves older than 30 days. So why not prevent respiratory disease before it steals from your bottom line? Vista Once protects your calves with the most complete respiratory disease coverage available, and Vision Blackleg vaccines can add 14 pounds per calf at weaning. For further information, contact your local veterinarian or animal health supplier. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. From Capitol Hill to the far side of cattle country, the National Cattlemen provides information NCBA members need. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. Now, let's go back to South Dakota to hear more about how to protect cattle from BRD-related losses. The positive working relationship between the Linscoff Thiel Ranch and Faith Veterinary Services is one Dr. Bill Burdett says is key to the success of any operation. And he says it's one he encourages as a technical services veterinarian. If you look at the Thiels and their ranching operation and their relationship with Dr. Winger, for example, they work very closely with her and vice versa. And those kinds of situations allow the, uh, the operation to glean, just as we were talking about, uh, the, the, the diagnostics. In other words, if they get on top of a problem or try to see ahead of any potential problems, then they can maximize their health and production of their herd. We in technical services provide additional support in that we can look at different possibilities for uh, products, but not only products, uh, actually working with diagnostic labs and, and being able to interact with, with people in the field, whether they be animal scientists or veterinarians, in order to bring even more expertise to the table. And working with the right, quality products also makes a difference when it comes to proactively managing your herd's health. The Vista products work well in our practice because they are low dose, two cc's. They're sub-Q administration, which is very important because we um, adhere to BQA guidelines. Um, they are multivalent, which is very important, and they are economical. You know, in these times, yeah, we're trying yeah. to get the most we can for our money. And when you have great immunity with a good product that's easy on the cattle, that doesn't cost the ranch, that's important. Vista Once is a, uh, a seven-way respiratory prevention product, and it contains five viral antigens, the IBR, BBD type 1, BBD type 2, BRSV, and PI3, along with the Mannheimia pastorella combination, the Mannheimia hemolytica pastorella multocida. And all seven of those agents are extremely common as it relates to bovine respiratory disease. And what I really like about Vista Once is it's, uh, it's a smooth product. 
and so it's all alive. And so the calf's immune system actually sees each of these seven organisms and is able to respond so that they get a complete immune response. I think that the interesting thing is about uh, 20 years ago, very typical to this region, as we got into late August, early September, we were having some down ears, a little coughing, typical signs of that. And uh, so we, we tried to be proactive and so we started a more rigorous vaccination program in the spring. And then uh, as we, we went past seven way and went into the IBR, BVD combination uh, respiratory shots, uh, we saw almost an immediate result. So we started using the Vista product, and, uh, and I really like it. And I think that's helped us. And it's a combination of a solid vaccination program and a strong nutritional program that leads to overall herd health, no matter your location. In this area of South Dakota, where, uh, where we're at today, Vista Once and Vision 7 Somnus are used uh, pretty commonly together. And uh, that really includes much of the northern United States because of the incidence of Histophilus somni, which used to be called or Haemophilus somnus. These two particular vaccines are pretty stress-free. And many veterinarians, and I would encourage you to consult with your veterinarians because they are aware of what's going on in your area. They're aware of any problems that, that, that might in, uh, occur, but much of that combination of product has been used. Uh, in this area very successfully because they're relatively easy on cattle. That is one of my favorite uh, points about the Vista line of vaccines is there are multiple combinations. You can tailor any program to an individual or producer because you have choices there. Um, one thing that the company has done very well is they have a complimentary uh, seven-way somnus or Haemophilus somnus product that works very well with the Vista once. So you can get a lot of antigens in two shots, which definitely adhere to our BQA standards. Just like the health benefits Vista and Vision provide to cattlemen, Linskoff Thiel strives to provide quality products and services to their customers. I think probably the most important thing I've learned is uh, treat your customers the way you'd like to be treated. I, I have, have just a great customer base and uh, I think interaction with them, treating them with a good product and good service and, and a good attitude, I think that's probably the most enjoyable part of it, that and raising cattle. Reporting from Isabel, South Dakota, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now to find out more about how you can protect your own herd from BRD, visit the website Merck Animal Health usa.com or log on to our website at cattleman to cattleman.org we'll have more right after this i am an ncba member i am an ncba member i'm an ncba member because ncba is our voice in washington i'm an ncba member I am an NCBA member because I feel it's important that we have uh, an association such as this in Washington, D.C. to support our cattlemen throughout the country. I am an NCBA member. Join me today. Follow me to Tennessee. Join your fellow cattlemen in Nashville for the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the oldest and largest convention for the beef industry, and it's great for education, networking, and fun. Plus, check out the NCBA Trade Show for the latest technology. It's the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, February 4th through 7th in Nashville. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted.
Feeding the world is a big job. The Dr. Kenneth and Caroline McDonald Inc. Foundation has committed more than $2 million to fund research at the University of Nebraska, Oklahoma State University, and Texas A&M University to improve efficiency in the cattle industry and to hold an annual cow-calf symposium. The first symposium was held at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln on September 12th and 13th. This cow feeding research supports the entire beef industry. I've never claimed to be a cow man, and I got the scars to prove it. Frost bit fingers, Baylor twine blisters, and an odd scrape on the side of my head where the hair won't grow back from last winter when my good horse slipped down on an ice slick on the calving lot. Well, I went out over the front quarter, hung my left spur in the canvas medicine bag, and lost a chunk of my ear when he drug me unconscious over the rusty metal feeder by the gate. Yet, my ear now looks like a chew toy. I never claimed to be a horseshoer, and I got the scars to prove it. A permanent stoop, calluses, and a slice across the inside of my thigh. See, I'd driven the first nail on this little gelding when a disoriented fruit bat soared down out of the rafters and tangled in the horse's forelock. He jerked his foot out of my grip. Now you can see what's happened. The, the wound has healed crudely. My girlfriend made a pair of cutoffs from my jeans, and we made a pair of coasters out of the scraps left from my shoeing chaps. I never claimed to be a dairyman, and I got the scars to prove it. Narcolepsy, deafness, a Dutch accent, and one thumb missing from the time I was inspecting the automatic grain feeder belt, thinking some of the buckets were loose. My coverhold sleeve hung up in the teeth and drug me across the milking stanchion. Electrical wire, hydraulic hoses, and pressure lines. Well, my sleeve finally tore off as we were drugged through the cinder block wall. Well, I spent a half a day in the hospital, and when they questioned the hired milker on duty, he said he'd been listening to Led Zeppelin on his iPod and hadn't heard a thing. Ah. I never claimed to be a TV star, and I got the scars to prove it. Cut! Cut! Baxter, can't you yeah. get this but, right? What is the matter with you? That this is, is a mark right takes. here, Bax. That's 42 a mark. Take. Up at the Just mean. start Come listening. To the can you not listen? <laughs> Come on, guys. Freaking get out, out of here. here. Goat roper. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> I can't take anymore. Oh, please stop. Freaking Are you walking? Yes, I'm walking. Oh, This is Baxter Black from out there. And I never claimed to be a TV host either, Baxter. Thanks for your stories. We'll be right back. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out beefusa.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at beefusa.org. There's only one place to find cattle industry updates, market highlights, and stories by cattlemen for cattlemen. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Learn about every segment of the industry, from cow-calf producers to feeders, from beef safety to food service and retail. Join host Kevin Oxner for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern on RFD-TV. One of the outstanding educational opportunities for anyone interested in the cattle business is Cattlemen's College, held each and every year at the big cattle industry convention and NCBA trade show. We asked cattlemen from around the country what they think of Cattlemen's College. 
Catalan's College is a wonderful opportunity for uh, transfer of information. I, I don't know how it, better to explain it than it is a uh, very unique experience of bringing very high quality experts to meet and interact and present to uh, cattlemen again that wouldn't normally have that opportunity to have that interaction or gather that information. Education is one of those things that I think it needs to be ongoing for the rest of your life. And whether you're 58 like me or you're 18 like somebody else, I think the Cattlemen's College brings a lot of new perspectives, a lot of new products, and a lot of some of, I think, some of the most intelligent men in the industry. It's a great place for, especially for younger producers, and you can come. There's always great topics in the Cattlemen's College as far as you know, different things that can help you improve your production practices and you know, work in a family organization. I mean, we all need help along those lines. So there's a great, it's a great place to come and learn and uh, kind of get with your peers, get excited about the industry. I like Cattlemen's College, that, and then when the cattle facts people speak, and if I, wouldn't, if I wouldn't go there every year, I'd feel like I was kind of out of the loop in the cattle industry. Don't miss Cattlemen's College and the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention in Nashville. You can register now by visiting beefusa.org. And don't forget, you can also sing your way to Tennessee if you're 18 or under and related to an NCBA, ANCW, or CBB member. You can compete in the NCBA National Anthem Singing Contest and possibly win a trip to the convention in Nashville and get a chance to sing at the Grand Ole Opry House. The deadline for entries in the singing contest is November 1st. So get online now at Beef usa.org to find out more about the contest rules and how to enter. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.